You are listening to the Starter Girls Podcast with Jennifer Loading. Whether you are starting a project, starting a business, starting a brand, or starting a movement, we are here to talk about it. And guys, I'm super excited to welcome my guest on the show, so we're going to get this started. It's a great day to be brave. You might as well start now. You have the power to change your circumstances any day you decide. Let today be that day. Rise up, be amazing, be you, do you. All right, so I want to welcome Shemay Nugent to the Starter Girls Podcast. Welcome. Hi there. Thanks so much for having me. Yes, we're super excited to have you here. So I'm going to tell our listeners a little bit about you, and then we're going to jump right in, and I'm so excited to chat with you today. So Shemaine is an author, blogger, podcaster, and a TV host with 40 years of experience as a fitness instructor. Before she worked with Zumba creator Beto Perez to develop Zumba in the circuit and traveled worldwide as an international Zumba fitness presenter and Zumba jammer, she got sick and almost died. And this story I really want to talk about today. Toxic mold was found between the walls in in the home she shared with her husband, rocker Ted Nugent, and their son, Rocco. She had four different types of mold in her bloodstream and was diagnosed with pre-emphysema. She dedicated her life to healing her family with natural alternative remedies. She continues to share her message through her online programs, podcasts, books, and social media. She has appeared on Entertainment Tonight, MTV, VH1, CMT, Discovery, Fox, Outdoor Channel, and many other networks. She's written several books, and you can currently find her hosting her own show, Simply Shemaine. So welcome. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So I want to jump right into this. I want to talk about you. I want to talk about how you got to where you are today. So tell us a little bit about how all this came about for you. Well, I've always tried to be healthy. I loved to exercise and work out. And as a kid, I was a tomboy. I even used to race motocross. I swam competitively. I was a state champion swimmer twice. I did gymnastics, basketball, volleyball, track, pretty much everything. And so when I got into college, I gained the the freshman 15 and then some. I was 30 pounds heavier than I am now. So I made it my mission. And by the way, I was a cheerleader in college. So (laughs) I made it my mission to get healthier. And when I figured out a couple of key tricks, I thought, wow, I need to share this information with everybody. And so I wrote a couple of books, but yeah, as you mentioned, the home that we lived in at one point that was once featured on MTV Cribs was contaminated with toxic mold and we just kept getting sicker and sicker. So I made it, you know, my life mis- mission. I'm, I say I'm on a mission from God to make America healthy again. And that's what I really want to do. I, I feel compelled to share my story with other people in the hopes that if I can just help one person, whether it's overcoming an obstacle or a tribulation, which I wrote about in my book called Married to a Rockstar. And I also wrote about it a little bit in my Four Minutes to Happy book. You know, we've all been through things that have brought us to our knees. And like you say, and what you're talking about in your podcast is the opportunity for us to get back up again and for us to, you know, it's never too late to start all over. I love this. Oh my gosh. And I was going through your bio as I was putting all this together and and you and I have different stories with so many parallels when it comes to like the health part of things. And so, because I was also a fitness instructor before I got sick and I, and fitness was kind of my passion before that, but it became increasingly not just so much even about the fitness, but the wellness, everything that goes with it and just all the natural things, because I think a lot of people don't really understand like whole body health and how all of these different things in our life, it's kind of like a, I see a pooch back there. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like my house. This is like my house all the time. The anime, I was joking. Because, no, it's okay. It's all good. It's all good. It shows you're human, right? It's not mine. Like that's not my tail. That's my tail. Come here, come here, come here. I love it. I love it. Come here. I was just saying, no, I think I can, it, I can. yeah, show us real quick. This is so awesome. This is Sorry so awesome. No, it's all good. It's all good. I said, see, this just shows that we're all human, right? <laughs> I, well, that's the benefit of this new normal. And, you know, a lot of us could say, wow, you know, and there are a lot of uh, tragic things going on. People are losing their jobs. They have a loss of income. But I love what you're doing because you're encouraging other people to it, to get back up on their feet and start over. And this is our new normal, you know, doing right. Zoom calls. And there's so many opportunities for us to radically transform our lives in the convenience of our home. You know, I've got like, 
I have a nice dress on, but I got flip flops on. So <laughs> well, it's good. You know, it's all good. Dog, we could have our dogs right here and, you know, pajamas on the lower half and whatever, you know, That's it's, right. it's, we've got to make the best of this situation. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm with you on that. So I want to talk real quick, I guess, a little bit about the 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 mold, not specifically the mold in itself, but just kind of how all this all came about for you. Because I know when you're going through, when you have something chronic like that, it's hard to pin down exactly what is going on, and it's almost like when you figure it out, it's like, wow, <laughs> why did it take so long for you to figure out figure this out? So. Tell us a little bit about that. Did you start like, and I, because I've read your book and I know our listeners don't know everything about you, but how did you start kind of figuring out what was going on here? Well, I was once named Detroit's most physical female and I traveled around the world, as you mentioned, um, uh, teaching Zumba. And I felt like 10 minutes into my classes, I couldn't get enough air into my lungs. It felt like an elephant was sitting on my chest and I was plagued with chronic migraines and I just made the best of it. And, you know, as women, we often make excuses for ourselves like, oh, I'm just too busy. And I, I did go to dozens and dozens of different doctors who told me you're just stressed. Well, what woman, what person on this planet, for the most part, isn't stressed? We all have different stresses. And I just prided myself on at having a master's degree in metaphysics. Man, I could figure this out. Why am I getting these migraines and why do I feel bad? And I I finally found somebody who pinpointed my symptoms, but my husband's and my son's as well, and sent us to a toxicologist who said, yeah, we both have, my husband and I had four different types of mold in our bloodstream wow. and our son Rocco had severe asthma. So we went, I knew that I had to heal myself and I was at this time, it was 2001. So nobody was talking about mold. I was like a pioneer and I dove into the rabbit hole, so to speak, and tried to find alternative or functional medicines to heal my body from the inside out. Because if you just take prescription drugs, that's going to cover the problem. The problem is still there. So I had to do things like infrared sauna, vitamin IV and oxygen. I did uh, acupuncture. I changed my diet. And yes, I meditated and I kept exercising and I tried to juice as much as I could. And I, I changed a lot of what I was doing. So that really helped me so much. I love that. And I did so many of those things that you're talking about too. So I know exactly what you're talking about. It's so crazy to me how like when you're going through this, and, and I talk about this even in my book at this point where I had walked into this I want to say holistic practitioner. This was four years after I had been struggling with my condition. I was kind of at this breaking point where I was like, something's got to give here. Like, I don't know what else to do. And I had started doing a lot of research and really going into things. And I remember walking into his office and him saying to me, what were you doing? What was going on in your life that contributed, you know, to this situation? And I'm thinking those that know my story have been following. They know the drama behind all this. But here I am thinking, I walked into my dentist office. I had a routine dental procedure. You know, I walked out two weeks later, I'm in severe pain. Hello. <laughs> what happened there? So I was really angry about that question. You know, in hindsight, after going back, you know, I wrote my book eight years later and I remember thinking about that. And there was so much going on in my life at that time because my kids were were young. I was running them all over the place. We were living in the fast food lane. Even though I was exercising, there were a lot of areas that I was suffering in. And so I think it's empowering, like you said, even earlier in the show, when you can come through on the other side of that, but then not only that, use your voice to impact and help other people. So that's what I love. That's why when I saw your bio and what you were doing and why I reached out to you, because so much of what you're doing resonates with what I'm trying to do every day. It's like, it, I feel like sometimes I'm just pounding on a wall, <laughs> trying to get things through that there's more to just you know, eating, <laughs> you know? Yeah, but but people are listening. So keep doing what you're doing. And I, I totally agree. You know, that there are some emotional uh, tribulations that we go through. And that's one of the reasons why I got my master's degree in metaphysics. I knew that there was a mind body connection. When I, when somebody said something to me, I, I used to have really, really thin skin, so to speak. And if somebody said something to me negatively, I didn't know how to process that. And then I would get stressful symptoms, physiological manifestations of that emotional trauma. And it's true that 
before, and I've written about this before, I've talked about it many times, so I'm not sharing any information that's not already out there. But just before, a few years before, our home that was once featured on MTV Cribs was contaminated with toxic mold. Yes, I discovered that my husband was having an affair. And if you can imagine, that's a very um, difficult situation to, to endure. And so there was emotional trauma that I was dealing with at the time. And I do think that that opens you up for more illnesses to come into your life. I think it's God's way of saying, hello, are you listening to me? Something's got to change. I love that. And it's so true. I agree with you 100% on that. There is the emotional state can really, well, and even like, you know, just worrying. I always talk about with people, right? You know, it raises the adrenals and, you know, worrying about things it adds to the, especially with what's going on right now. So I love everything that you're saying. One of the things I want to ask you, I think that's just kind of fun. Um, is there any like maybe childhood impact that, or something that happened maybe in your childhood that impacted who you are today as a human being? Oh, gosh, so many things. Um, yeah, actually, I was very shy when I was a little girl, and my mother put me into acrobatic dancing classes. And I maybe overcorrected a little bit. I don't know, but I love to dance and I love to exercise. So that had a huge impact on me. And I think a lot of times we do things. I remember in Michigan, there was this guy um, who was a gardener and I would listen to him. Um, I can't remember his name, Tom, the green thumb or something, but I was listening to him and he talked about how when he was a kid, he was throwing a baseball and he broke the neighbor's window and the neighbor said, okay, in order to, you know, you can't pay for it. So I want you to do my gardening. That led to him becoming this master gardener. So I do think that things in our lives that happen to us as children help set us up for who we need to be when we become adults. And part of the problem that, you know, when we experience the FOMO, the fear of missing out, there's something that we're not addressing that we need to address. We all need to become more childlike. And I don't know if you see on social media, I post as much as I can you know, silly things as much as serious things. But I did a cartwheel on the beach the other day and I'm like, wow, I'm 58. I can still do a cartwheel. That's awesome. And I think we need to have more fun and more joy in life, especially during these difficult times. I did see your cartwheel, by the way. And it was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. I don't know if I could still do a car wheel. I used to. I took dance too. <laughs> my producer back, yeah, my producer back here is saying he can still do a car wheel. We might have to put that on the podcast sometime. Let's do it. I love Let's it. I love it. No, I do follow your stuff on social media and you do put a lot of fun stuff on there. I love it. It's very diverse. And I think you're right about the the having fun because a lot of us, we do, we get wrapped up in being so serious all the time and being perfectionist, you know, and I think it's great when you can let the guard down because people can resonate with that and they can yeah. find the the common ground there. So I think that's awesome. Love it. Love it. So find, what I say is find the thing that makes your heart sing and you'll be happier and healthier. Amen. You know, for example, if you, I read, I write about this in my book. If you feel like something is missing in your life and you want to have a different job or career, or maybe you're pushed into that situation because of the current economic climate, um, maybe th think about those things that resonate with you that you might be gifted and talented in. For example, I am not a great organizer. Like I like to have everything organized, but I don't always get there. I'm always scrambling at the last minute. I would love to have somebody help me get organized, help me run errands and things like that. And you know what? If I can pay somebody to do that, it's helping them as well as it's helping me. So I, you know, to your audience, never sell yourself short. Think about those things that you're gifted and talented at or what somebody says, wow, you're so good at drawing, you're so good at writing, you're so good at singing, whatever it is, and you might be able to help other people and find some residual income on the side. I love this. I love it so much. So another fun question I want to ask you, because as a, you know, being who you are, and I kind of wrote this to you when I reached out to you, it's just really you and your husband both have had successful careers. You both are very, have had these amazing, you know, outside of and independent of one another. I'm just curious because I know my listeners are going to want to hear this. How have you two been able to juggle the dueling careers and just maybe share a little bit about that with us, how you guys have gotten through that? 
You know, I never felt, I, I don't feel like I have a successful career. When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a newscaster and I wanted to get into news. But after I met and married my husband, I had a baby and I didn't want to leave raising that child to somebody else. I sure. wanted to be there. So even though I wanted to have a career, I put that on hold and I ended up producing his TV show. It's called Ted Nugent, Spirit of the Wild. I'm the um, co-producer and co-host of that show. It's not exactly what I wanted to do, but I was able to stay with my family, keep my family together. And also, you know, kind of some of my dreams it wasn't until my son left, which has now been 10 years. He's um, left from, from high school, from our home, and he's, he's working as an actor and musician out in Los Angeles. And, you know, at that point, I'm like, uh, well, I should probably do something on my own now. And my husband had his career, and I'm just not a really good, I was going to say Susie homemaker. I do love to bake. I'm, I do love, and I love to cook. Last night I made um, a rigatoni di from um, Maggiano's and it yum. was really good. Yum. But I have a couple of dishes that I can do, but I, it's not my forte. But I thought, you know, I, I'm just not really good at staying at home and just cooking and cleaning. I want to help people. I'm a number two on the Enneagram scale. And I think that's really important. I feel best when I'm sharing information with people. I love that. So yeah. to, to answer your to answer your question, how we juggle it is we kind of um, now our kids are our dogs. And so my husband had to be gone for today, most of the day. So I'm at home with the dogs. I love so it. So we, we, we kind of trade off. You know? Yeah. How many dogs do you guys have over there? We have three. We have Happy, who you saw his tail. He's a Labrador Catahoula Black Mouth Cur mix. We have Sadie, who is a Labrador, and Coco, who's a German Shepherd. Very fun. We have a Catahoula as well. His name is you Thor. Do. We do. We have a Catahoula. His name's Thor. I just took him out today. Now, and then... does, your, does your Catahoula climb trees? Because mine does. No, but he's he's pretty neurotic. <laughs> he's our crazy, crazy dog. Yeah. yeah. And then we got a, we just recently, we rescue, we do all of our pets are rescues. We never buy them. We go and rescue them. We just recently got a little pit bull Prendle or Brendel and he's our little, or she's our little Corona dog. But that one, Aww. she, I've never, I, I'm, I'm going to say I've had a lot of crazy dogs, but this one is probably the most crazy. <laughs> she is. It's we, amazing how, how they have such different personalities, right? Yes, yes. We have fun, but I tell you, it's it's every day is a new day. And I it's like every week I get beat up at least once by her. She runs into me with her head, something. I have a bruise. Last week it was my finger, yeah. this week my leg. So that's fun. But um, no, I love that what you said about the balancing because I do think that's important. A lot of times I do get women on here that have kids and they're juggling that. And we always talk about, you know, how do you find the harmony? I don't really talk about balance because I think balance is kind of a little bit unachievable, but finding harmony is is what it be important. Great. Yeah, I love that. That's great because balance to me and balance to you could be two different things, but harmony, yeah. And um, we talk about in the Enneagram, having that triad. Do you know what the Enneagram is? I do. I do know what that is. Okay. Yes, yes. What number are you? Just curious. I, I can't remember. I've d I just did it recently and I can't tell you off the, off the top of my head, but no I worries. do know what it is. Yeah, I do know what it is because we, well, we, we studied that. we about having that that triad, if it feels good in your heart center, if it feels good in your gut center and it feels good in your head, you know, there's, there's different, there's not people. And we can't expect everybody to function on the same level. Right. There are people who are great accountants and I need an accountant in my life and people who are good with numbers and people who are good at delegating tasks. We're all different. So finding that harmony that best works for you in mind, body, and spirit is what's really most important, I think. 100%, 100%. So who would you say has been your greatest influencers over the years? Anybody come to mind? Oh, lots of people. Um, my mom, um, honestly, my son, because when I, now what I think of things, I want to leave a legacy for my son and I want to do things. I want to show him that, you know, even though I'm 58, I can still do cartwheels on the beach. I can still find the thing that makes my heart sing and I can still 
inspire and motivate and encourage others to be happier and healthier. And he's actually doing the same thing. He does uh, somatic training. He's a yoga instructor. So we're kind of on the same path. But, um, you know, there's so many people I, I, I think of, you know, people like Mother Teresa, who even though she had a heart for helping people, she also was, she's an eight or was an eight on the Enneagram scale and eights delegate. And when sometimes I look to people, like I said, initially, I used to have really thin skin. And my husband is actually a huge influencer in my life. He's always gotten me to be tougher and encouraged me to be tougher. And when people would say things to me, don't let it bother you. And I watch, you know, people just unload on him sometimes and call him names that are so untrue. And it hurts my feelings and it doesn't hurt his at all. So I think that, you know, we've become a little bit overly sensitive and um, we've just got to plow forward and do the thing for us that makes our heart sing. I love that. And you're so right. <laughs> yeah, I used to joke about that, too, all the time, because I, I, too, was one that that that. I've gotten over a lot of things people say, but interestingly enough, I used to be the type of person that if somebody asked me to do something, I would have a difficult time saying no. And then, of course, I would complain about it later. And I've learned, I've had such great mentors in my life. And one specifically, you know, she used to always say when someone would ask her something and she didn't want to do it, she would say, thanks for thinking of me. Catch me next time. You know, And so I've gotten really good at being able to do that now without taking it so personal that if I say no to yes. someone, it's not because I don't like you. It's just it's not something that I can welcome into my life at that moment. So I love yeah, all that it, you're saying. That, that was very difficult for me, very difficult for me to delegate and ask people in um, an other, a different way than it was passive aggressive. For example, the, one of the turning points for me in my life was when my son was older and the trash was just piling up and his job was to take out the trash. And I, I would say, I'd walk by him sitting on the couch and I would say, hey, honey, when you get a chance, could you please take out the trash? And I'd keep going really nice. And later on the day, I'm like, honey, um, when you're done with that, could you take out the trash, please? And like, it was like the third time that I said it super nice. He said, mom, tell me exactly what you want me to do and when. And honestly, like that, wow, I just, I, take out the trash now. Like, to say that, um, it, it, it was bold. And some people might think, ah, that's not, not such a big deal. But, you know, when when you learn a passive aggressive mentality, mm -hmm. my mom is a people pleaser. And I learned that. I watched her doing that all of her life. And so I took that on and I wanted to make people happy. And it took me a lot to, to, to re think about, you know, you can't make everybody happy. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So real quick, I want to talk about your new show, The Simply Shemaine. How long has this been sh been out now? Oh, I think we're on our 10th show or okay, 11th awesome. show. And awesome. you're going to be on an upcoming uh, segment of Simply Shemaine. And you know what? It was one of those things that I always wanted to do. I, it was on my bucket list of doing a talk show, but I wanted to do a talk show that talked a little bit about current events, a little bit about healthy living, and a little bit about at the end, I always say something to make you smile. So we show funny pet videos, which I always want to end on a good note because there's a lot to be negative in this right. world. But, you know, I think as we reach out to other people and we think about those things that make us smile, for me, it's always pets. Yeah, I can agree with you on that. And and I love the way that your show is, you know, that was the first time I had seen it when I reached out to you. And then I was going back and I really like how you have the segments in there. It brings a little bit of a different uniqueness to it. It's not all just about this one one thing, whether it's health and wellness or or what current events, it's a little bit of everything going in there. So yeah. I think that's great. And I, and I like that you're ending it on a positive note because I do, I think it kind of diffuses a lot of things. So I'm excited about what you've got going on. I think you've got some amazing things going on with that. So I want to ask you some fun rapid fire questions. I always do these okay. with my guests and this is where I get to really okay. like dig in and find out something about you. So I'm not okay. going to ask the cat or dog because I know you like dogs. <laughs> I already got well, that I figured like out. Cats too, you like cats dogs. too. Okay. Awesome. So what, um, all right, let's do this one. Morning or night person. Morning. Morning. Awesome. Love it. I'm a morning person. All right. Um, summer or winter? Summer. Summer. Okay. And what would you say is your favorite food? Um, hmm. 
junk food or regular food? It can be whatever you want. Like I, my favorite, I'm going to probably say custard, <laughs> even though I don't eat it every day. Well, yeah, I like, um, well, I love healthy food because then I can, eat, you know, it's all about balance or living right. in harmony. So um, like I mentioned, I love that dish that I made that uh, Maggiano's rigatoni D, but I do it with, I, I'm, I'm doing mostly keto right now. But I, I listen to my body. Sometimes I need a little bit of potatoes mm -hmm. or a little bit of starchy things. But I live the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of what I do and what I eat is really clean and really healthy. The other 20%, not so much. So my other favorite food is peanut M&Ms. Oh, yum. I did not. That's I have not and, had anybody say fritos. that one. For, for you said Fritos? <laughs> Yeah, I haven't had anybody say that yet. It's so funny. People come on here because I'll get the people that are like, I like broccoli or cauliflower. And then I'll get somebody that's like, I like macaroni I mean, and yeah. cheese. <laughs> and I'm like, and they'll ask me like my two, like I, eat, I do like you. I eat clean pretty much every day, but you know, once in a while I want something. And so my two would, are always like, I have to debate between chips and salsa or custard. Those are my debates every time because I love both equally. In my book, in my book, chips, salsa, and guacamole, that's a complete meal. It could be. You are absolutely right. And a glass yeah. of wine. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 100% on that. So if you could be any character or superhero for one day, what would you pick? Uh, well, Wonder Woman comes to mind because I want to, you know, I want to battle justice and I want justice for all. And I want to help people when they need it the most. And I wish I had you know, stronger arms. So <laughs> yeah, well, you're, you are a very strong lady. I think your story is immensely powerful and I love what you're doing. And just, I mean, all the things that the achievements and the accolades that you've acquired over the years, it just really shows your determination. And um, I think what you're doing is great. You're a great influencer. And even if you don't think it's a successful career, the rest of us do think it's an amazing career. So I love it. Well, thank you. If thank, our, you. thank you. And if our listeners wanted to learn a little bit more about you, where would they go? Where's your site? Where would they find you? Oh, I'm everywhere. Um, so my website is shemainnugent.rocks. You can watch my Facebook watch show called Simply Shemaine. That's every Tuesday at five o'clock Eastern at facebook.com slash shemaine.nugent. And I also air it on YouTube, although I'm not as active on YouTube and I'm not as active on Twitter, but I am on Facebook and also Instagram at Shemaine Nugent. Awesome. And we'll be sure you probably saw it scrolling on the screen. My producer is like really good back here. He is good at keeping That's up awesome. with everything. But we will make That's sure awesome. when it goes out, I'm going to put your website and everything on there so that people can check you out. And definitely I will tell the listeners, check out the Instagram page and the Facebook because there's videos in there. A lot of fun stuff happening. You can see the cartwheel in there. <laughs> A lot Yay! of fun. A lot of fun. <laughs> so with that, I do want to say, Shemaine, thank you so much for jumping on here. I know your schedule is busy. I don't want to keep you long. And we just appreciate you jumping on here and sharing your story with us. And uh, all that amazingness. And so to the listeners, I'm trying to find my what I want to read here. To the listeners, I do want to say to you guys, if you enjoy our show, please be sure you give us a rating both on Facebook and iTunes because we can't do this without you. And hit the subscribe button on YouTube. And with that, I'm going to leave you guys with this. One who lives a life with passion is like a brightly burning fire. A small dim free can easily be extinguished by gust of wind, but a large bright one will grow bigger as the wind grows stronger. In the same way, the more obstacles a passionate person encounters, the brighter and stronger that person grows. So you guys take care, be safe, and be kind to one another. We'll see you next time.